across the fence from sap to syrup. It's Vermont's sweetest season. Our expert is here to help producers of the state's multi-million dollar maple industry. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. There are a lot of factors that go into making the pure Vermont maple that is known around the world. The weather, the health of the forest, and the freshness of the sap are all important, but perhaps the most critical factor in making quality maple products is the actual sugar maker. Vermont sugar makers are supported by the UVM Extension Maple Program, which provides timely and research-based information to professionals and anyone interested in pure maple syrup. Mark Iselhart heads the Extension Maple Program, and he's already gearing up for the 2017 season. Thanks for coming in. Sure. So is the season underway already? It has. Really? Uh, the, the warm season or warm period we had mm -hmm. uh, a number of weeks ago allowed some sap to flow. And the people, the operations that are so large that they have to start tapping right after New Year's, they collected some sap. Mm -hmm. So there are a few producers who produced maybe roughly 10% of their crop already. By and large, most producers have not started making syrup yet. One aspect of the season has already taken place. You hosted two statewide maple education conferences. Tell us a little bit about those conferences. So it's a great tradition uh, that we have uh, a partnership between UVM Extension and the Vermont Maple Sugar Makers Association. And what they are are full day uh, conferences where sugar makers can come and take classes. So for instance, we had two, Brattleboro and Morrisville. We had over 400 425 producers and people interested in maple show up at those two conferences. The Brattleboro conference had 19 different classes. The Morrisville one had 22 different classes. We had producers <clears throat> from as small as 25 taps all the way up to 100,000 taps. Wow. And we had classes on subjects that were relevant to, to really all of them. And let's talk a little bit about some of the specifics. Um, <clears throat> There's tubing workshops to topics like retail sales and invasive species. Right. So we really try to make the program interesting to anyone who is even remotely interested in maple. Some people are going to be drawn towards the really high tech, mm -hmm. biggest evaporator, biggest RO, that sort of thing. Other people might be more interested in business and marketing. And some people are just getting into it and want to learn the basics of how to tap a tree. And um, you know, we even have a a class on making maple cotton candy. So it was a hands-on class. People could come and learn about not just the product, but the nuts and bolts of making the product. And here's actually a tubing demonstration. We had some volunteers pretend to be, bend, pretend to be trees and, and learn about <laughs> running the tubing out. You could see George Cook mm -hmm. um, in that picture. Now, there was always uh, also a workshop on forest tent caterpillars, and I remember doing a news story about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what I was curious about is they really kind of have a three-year cycle. So how does that affect a sugar bush? So um, as a lot of your listeners or viewers know, forest tent caterpillar is, a, is an issue right now. It, it is a native pest. So they're here all the time in the background. It's mm -hmm. only every 10 to 20 years we see a big outbreak. And we're entering our second year of what would be considered an outbreak. Sugar bushes that have had this pest um, uh, devastate, or not, I wouldn't say devastate, but defoliate their trees, right. will see lower growth. Um, but the details about what it impacts, how it impacts sap flow the following year isn't really well understood. There, the state of Vermont Forest Parks and Recreation are doing egg mass surveys right now, which will help predict the coming year's uh, defoliation. Although, just like the sugaring season, it's really hard to pre accurately predict because the weather impacts sap flow, but also impacts how the caterpillars develop and how big an outbreak you have. Right, so it's still sort of just watch and see what happens. So the egg mass surveys help with giving an estimate of what the defoliation would be, but there are lots of things that can make it less. So we really will know more by the end of the next growing season. Now, in these different conferences that you had, is there sort of one thing that people kept asking about or one big concern that folks had? You know, um, we get evaluations back. We have a really good response rate. Um, so we're able to hear what people have for concerns and modify the program going forward. I think the, the biggest, most common responses were tree health. Right. Um, overproduction. People are concerned that the industry has grown so much. It's roughly tripled in Vermont in the last 20 years. People are concerned how is that going to impact the price paid to producers um, and that sort of thing. So you have two kind of big categories, and then marketing, business, um, and also keeping up with the latest technology. So, you know, people are drawn to different subjects, and, they're, and they certainly um, 
They certainly ask questions and we try to give our best answers. Well now one of the key roles of the sugar making is of course grading the syrup that's made <clears throat> and you've been working on a series of videos that help educate producers about maple grading and we have an example that we're going to look at right now. Making quality pure maple syrup requires a lot of hard work and careful attention to detail. From the tree to the bottle, many steps are required to produce the high quality product sugar makers are known for and customers expect. Hello, this is Mark Isselhart from the University of Vermont Extension Maple Program. There are four grades of pure maple syrup that can be sold in a retail container. They are golden color, delicate taste, amber color, rich taste, dark color, robust taste, and very dark color, strong taste. It is up to the producer or whomever's name appears on the retail container to correctly identify into which grade their syrup falls. Whatever the grade of syrup, it must meet the legal standard in four categories, color, clarity, flavor, and density. This video will cover the basics of flavor grading maple syrup. The flavor of maple syrup is what sets it apart from all other sweeteners. Flavor is also the most subjective and potentially challenging category of grading maple syrup. Some individuals are better than others at tasting flavor. This can be the result of experience tasting syrup or simply having more sensitive taste buds. The vast majority of maple syrup produced is the high quality product consumers expect. Occasionally, however, some batches of syrup can have an off flavor. Grading syrup flavor has two major objectives. Making sure each batch of syrup is characteristic of the color grade and the detection of any defect or off flavor. Each of the four grades of pure maple syrup has a flavor descriptor that is intended to give consumers a sense of what strength of flavor to expect when purchasing syrup. Generally speaking, syrup flavor strength increases as color darkens. While there are times when this is not the case, for the most part, the darker the syrup, the stronger the taste. Syrup flavor will gradually lose its strength over time. Unlike the color grades of syrup, there are no precise breakpoints in flavor grade. Golden delicate syrup has a delicately sweet original maple flavor. Amber rich syrup has a flavor which is more pronounced than that of golden delicate, but which is not strong or unpleasant. Dark strong syrup may have a flavor which is stronger than that of amber rich, but which is not sharp, bitter, buddy, or off flavored. Lastly, very dark strong may have a flavor stronger than dark robust, but shall not be damaged in any way. So that's just part of your new video on how to, to grade syrup. Um, is it difficult to, to flavor grade? Um, it helps to have experience. So the yeah. more syrup you taste, the, the better you'll be at it. Uh, certainly producers have a lot of experience tasting right. it. But occasionally, uh, off flavors will naturally occur through part of the boiling process. Mm -hmm. um, the precursors for that off flavor are in the sap. They get concentrated as you turn it into syrup. So when you're judging syrup, if you're doing a syrup contest, you must grade syrup on the four basics, color, clarity, flavor, and density. Flavor ends up being a very distinctive part of it. And um, with more experience, you have more tasting. So, and you want to give it a try? Sure, yeah. All right. So this is a product that we've put out, and it is a reference kit for producers. Yep. yep, and it contains the three most common natural off flavors in maple syrup. So these are things that happen occasionally during the season that producers should be aware of, and th there's nothing inherently wrong with it except that it doesn't belong in a retail container. So you wouldn't want a consumer to, to get this experience. Okay. So the first one we have is what's called metabolism. Taste of that. It must taste a little coffee-ish or something. Yep, a little coffee, a little chocolatey. Mm -hmm. that, that tends to get, um, it's not the most extreme example. We made these kits to be kind of a middle of the road yeah. example of each one. So there's enough off flavor there to detect it, but not so much that people might be misled to think that anything up to that extreme point is okay. okay. This uh, metabolism tends to show up um, anytime during the season, typically after a really hard freeze and then a really fast warm up, you'll, you'll tend, to, tend to get it. 
So this is sort of the other end of the season. This is at the end of the season. This is called Buddy. Mm. It almost tastes burnt. Yep. Um, that is something yeah. that happens as the, <laughs> as the tree is coming out of dormancy. Mm -hmm. the, the, the tree is starting to signal to the upper part of the tree it's time to get ready so to break bud. So you wouldn't want to sell this. This would not be something that would belong in a retail container. Yeah. Um, and again, this is not the most extreme example. So okay. <laughs> it gets is, worse. <laughs> it, it, it can be more intense for okay. sure. And so this last one is called sour sap. And this is sap, the result of sap that has uh, sat around a little too long. And you can see it has a bit of a stringy consistency to it. Yeah. It's almost, almost a little bit what they call ropey. Molasses almost. Yep. Molasses with a little bit of a sour, mm -hmm. a sourness to yeah, it. Yeah, bitter. So that's the result of sap that's been sat too long mm -hmm. in typically warmer temperatures. And some of the sugars start to get broken down a little bit. You end up with this kind of almost stringy material. You know, it, it can be used in other things. Certainly, you have say, products it, like. Do these, these get thrown out or what? No, they typically would be called processing grade. Mm -hmm. So they're not. Uh, available for retail sale, but they can be used in things like uh, meats or uh, granola sometimes turned into a hard sugar mm -hmm. where a lot of that off flavor gets boiled, gets boiled off. So what other videos are you producing for the benefit of sugar makers? So we have the, the uh, density and the flavor videos. We'll be having the color and clarity, which will fill out the four components of grading maple syrup, and they'll be available later in the sugaring season. Mm -hmm really trying to give producers and anyone interested in maple the basics of how we produce the, the great product that maple is. And where can people see these videos? So the videos are housed on the uh, UVM Extension uh, website. And you just type in UVM Maple Extension and, and, and look for our, our videos. Overall, would you say, can you sort of judge the health of the maple sugar trees across the state, the big picture? Are trees doing well? It seems like, you know, with more production, people might worry, well, how much can the trees really take? Sure. Um, so in general, year to year, there can be variations in, in the, the overall health. There certainly are challenges with forest tent caterpillar. Mm -hmm. And last season, their growing season, there was a bit of a drought in a lot of places. Right. So um, this coming year, hopefully there'll be more moisture and, and uh, We'll have a better chance. That question about the long-term health um, is something that we're starting to research. Um, we're entering our fourth year of a long-term health project at the Proctor Maple Research Center, mm -hmm. looking at the impacts of high vacuum sap extraction versus more traditional gravity extraction and no tapping. And we're comparing growth rates um, of those three treatments over the long term. So you have to stay tuned on that. <laughs> so part of your work too is research. What are you working on as far as research is concerned? Right, so we have that long term project, mm -hmm. which is something that's been of interest to people for sure. a long time. Uh, we're also starting to look at uh, what are the impacts of tapping different size trees? There are things called tapping guidelines, which have been around for a long, long time. Um, and those are basically recommendations about how big a tree um, is good to tap. We're starting to look at what is the impact of tapping small trees uh, compared to more traditional sized trees, just to see uh, what's the impact on the tree's mm -hmm. overall health. Yeah, and it might, you know, down the road it might be beneficial to someone who has less land to have trees densely compact that they could tap. Right. And one of the things about tubing systems is that you lose that individual tree knowledge. You don't be able to see it at a bucket level how right. much sap was produced. So we use those big chambers to measure how much sap we get per tree mm -hmm. on those various treatments. And a reminder before we go how people can see those new maple videos that you produced. Sure. So go to the UVM Extension Maple website, look for media and videos. And if anyone's interested in the off flavor kits, they're actually <laughs> they're actually available through the Vermont Maple Sugar Makers Association. Which is really interesting to taste. I had, you know, very surprised by the different flavors you can get. Yep. I should next time I'll bring some good syrup to, <laughs> to compare with. <laughs> so I can cleanse my palate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah. you so much. You're That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.